Welcome to Bridge the Atlantic's B-Sides, a brand new show where we share material that doesn't quite fit in with our interview series, such as outtakes, bonus segments, and useful tips from your two favorite co-hosts, as well as the occasional surprise drop-in from some of our favorite previous guests. We're your hosts, music web designer Ross Barber-Smith from Scotland, owner of Electric Kiwi, where we create awesome custom websites for bands, artists, and musicians. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as Electric Kiwi. And I'm singer-songwriter and multi-instrumentalist Marcin Novelli from Canada, a man who wears many hats literally and figuratively. When I'm not releasing music under my own name, I'm producing and mixing records for other artists, or directing and editing music videos and music documentaries. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as my name, Marcio Novelli. As you probably all know, we have shirts available. Yes. Um, they're not quite new anymore, but oh. they're still very nice and we still love you too have one and wear one. There's a link to them in our show notes, yeah. so uh, go and get your own. Yes, and uh, make sure to use the coupon code BTA Rocks to receive 10% off your purchase. Should I say it as our little way of saying thank you? <laughs> oh, you said it in English this time. So, Marcio. Yes, sir. Mr. Novelli. Yes. You have some exciting news. Yes, I do. This episode's out on the 28th of March, mm-hmm. and your new EP is out on the 31st. Yes, it's actually my first uh, solo release in a few years. I know. Tell me about it. I've been (laughs) waiting for this for as long as I've known you. (laughs) 2012. You have, yeah. (laughs) It's my first acoustic beat in 10 years since the release of my first solo EP. I'm so excited to release something new, and uh, I'm also working on a new album, which will be out later this year. But yeah, I'm so excited. Cool. Well, I'm going to challenge you. Okay. How so? Okay. So the challenge is, I want you to give us an elevator pitch for the new EP in 30 seconds or less. Oh gosh. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So my new EP, which is called The Reimagining Volume 1, which indicates that maybe there'll be more volumes, um, is uh, basically features acoustic renditions of some of my previously released material. Um, stripped down. I stripped the songs down and built them back up, but a bit more delicately than I did on my albums. Um, I'm calling it an acoustic EP, but really it also includes uh, brand new piano parts as well as uh, string arrangements. Speaking of which, um, this is the first time ever that I took on the responsibility of arranging a three-string trio for this EP. Uh, I just felt like it's what it needed. I didn't know how to do it. And I just said, hey, when you don't know how to do something, you learn how to do it. Was that three yeah, seconds? I think that was probably a little over 30, okay, but okay. you know, I'm going to let it slide. <sighs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a borderline pass. Okay. So you're okay. okay. You're okay there. Um, and I know with this, uh, with this EP, you, you did you know, li- literally everything yourself. Yeah. Um, um, as you so know, you I, tell us about that. Yeah. As you know, I always write and perform everything on my um, albums. Um, but uh, just as I did on my first EP, The Overture, many, many years ago, um, I also decided to produce, engineer, and mix this entirely myself, which was quite the task, but uh, I wouldn't have had it other, any other way, really. And is that something that you'd recommend all artists do, like produce themselves, or or should they be working, you know, looking to work with a producer? No, I definitely don't think that uh, artists should produce themselves. I think what they should focus on is writing the best songs possible, becoming the best musicians, singers, everything is possible. And I do think that they should um, look to learn how to record themselves so they can produce some good demos. Once they've got something they're very, very happy with, then they should seek out a producer, I think, to help them realize um, their vision up until they start learning how to do some things themselves. Um, and then maybe they can start going from hiring producer to co-producing with another producer, which is what I do on my albums. This EP, I decided to produce it entirely myself just because, you know, I didn't want any other outside opinion on it. It was just such a intimate and vulnerable piece that I wanted it to just be completely my influence, right? I mean, I, I pride myself on being very vulnerable in everything I do, uh, beginning with the writing of the song, through the recording process, and even continuing on when I perform on stage. But, you know, this was just that much more intimacy. And I think just because I, I dialed the songs back, I slowed them down, I, I dropped the keys down, um, you know, and I just I needed it to be something that I just did on my own. Like I said, when I bring in a producer, it's a co-production. Um, I think I've mentioned this many times in the past and in past episodes um, when we've had producers on the show. But for me, I can never just give complete control to someone else. Someone might bring in a producer in and literally to guide the direction of their album, right? They might bring a producer in, be like, here's my songs, but the producer completely rips it apart, 
And I'm not saying this is a bad thing. Some people really need that. You know what I mean? And, and guides them in a completely new direction. When I bring in a co-producer, I bring them more as a, as a coach. You know what I mean? I know where I want to take mm-hmm. the album and I they have they better be on that same path as me. They better want to take it the same place as me um, or else that's not going to be a good fit for me. Um, and they're there mostly when I'm playing the parts and particularly singing to have someone outside of myself, you know, hearing that and either being like, yeah, it was great. Or, you know, I know you can do better. Um, you know, let, let's go. And, and also allowing some, some sort of input from their end. They might have an idea of, uh, you know, maybe that we should put a background vocal here. Maybe we should do that. Or what do you think about doing a solo here? You know? So that's the collaboration I like, particularly on albums because they're more realized they're, they're bigger. Whereas this was, I didn't feel like I needed that this time. I felt like I, it was the truest to me sitting down with my guitar, writing the songs. If that makes any sense. Does that make sense? That makes sense. <laughs> my long-winded yeah. answer. That definitely wasn't 30 seconds. <laughs> that wasn't, but you know, I wasn't challenging you to do it that time. But producers are, I definitely respect producers. And I mean, we've had several producers on the show um, that we both respect. Um, speaking of which, we've had a legendary record producer on the show, which I want to ask yeah. you, how do you, how do we, how do we ever get that word legendary placed on our name? Like how, when, when is the moment where you go from like, just that guy to being that legendary guy. I think you know? enough people need to be referring to you as <laughs> yeah. Yeah. some kind of who's legend. That first, first person that does it, right? Yeah, maybe maybe one day we'll get there, Russ. Maybe. What do yeah. you think? Well, we're working towards it, but you know, you <laughs> we'll can't see. predict these things. Exactly. So who was this legendary uh, producer oh, yeah, that we probably are, speaking of? Yeah. Well, it's Garth Richardson. Fellow Canadian record producer out from the West Coast. I mean, he's legendary record producer, and but also he can now be known as the Revenge King. Legendary uh, Revenge sh- King, maybe. The le- <laughs> yeah, yeah, the the LRK. Yeah, you could call him. Uh, yeah, no, he um, he shared some really kind of off the wall revenge stories with us. Yeah, uh, I think we we kept a couple of them in the interview. Yeah, um, but. There was one that we cut out mostly for time and because mm-hmm. it wasn't really, you know, that's not the, the subject of the interview. So that's what we're this B-Sides is about, sharing some of these extra bits as well as new things and, you know, a whole bunch of different things that we aren't able to share with you in the interview. This is an example of some of the stuff we'll be sharing on B-Sides. So uh, enjoy. I actually had my engineer who, when it was my actual birthday, we went out to the strip club and I was up on the dance floor and 17 girls lined up to give me facial patty wax and all, all of a sudden you know like the first girl slaps me happy birthday you got the next girl takes off my belt and kind of hits me in the back with the belt i'm going like oh that's kind of hurt and the actual next girl was a full dominatrix uh you know thing and she hit me and she went whack up you know like came back and I went oh that kind of hurt but it kind of you know actually was like oh you know okay good girl this this, this next girl just just Unleashed the belt as hard as she could. My actually shirt ripped. Oh. Had a welt welt on my back, this big blood <laughs> everywhere. I'm in tears. I went, <laughs> let go. That hurt. So my friend, who actually said it's all up, my engineer, just kind of was looking at me. Let you know he and he was in tears, laughing, and I said, I will get you back. So nine years later, oh. I'm in Queens. <laughs> And every day, these two New York City beat cops came by to have lunch. They were metal fans. They love metal. So, you know, so of course, I'm actually talking to them. So I go, hey, guys, I'd like you to do me a big, a big f- favor. What? Well, my engineer's coming here in about three, three days. Would you mind taking him back to the airport? So he comes in the day and he's working away. And these two fully clothed New York City, you know, guns and batons, they, you know, they, they had a paper with his name, name on it. And they, you know, into the room, would you be Mr. You know, blah, blah, blah. And he said, yes, I am. Well, as it turns out, somebody actually called us. You got to go back, back to Canada. You are being, you, you know, you know, being thrown out of the States. And I was in cuffs up against the wall and I was being frisked and he's, and he's walking down the hallway and you could, he's like, yeah, I've known Garth for a long time, you know, and, and he was literally shaking, shitting his pants. He was being thrown out of the States. And, um, I turned around in and actually full, you know, cuffs and went, sir, you have been punked. And he was literally 
shaking his hands. <laughs> like he was literally like for like three days, he was just, he, he could not believe it. So, so, so the lesson here is don't piss off Garth because do not, he you might you even wait nearly I get you back to get back to you. <laughs> I'm going to wait nine years. <laughs> you hold I out waited for nine game. years. Well, you know, you know, you got Sometimes to. you have to, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So what have we learned, Russ? What have we learned? We've yeah. learned that we don't want to get on Garth's bad side. No. <laughs> That's for sure. Exactly. A great yeah. guy. Great he guy. He is, but yeah, but you just really don't want to cross him. Don't piss him off. No. <laughs> no. Definitely not. Um, speaking of so recording then, studios. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, speaking of recording what? studios, we're going to kind of jump back into your EP. Oh, okay, cool. Your recording world a yeah. little bit. Mm -hmm. um, how many days did you spend in the, in the studio recording the reimagining? I actually sporadically did this. So I first started working on this in late 2014, actually. Um, my, my oldest son was only what, like two years old and a uh, little surprise. You hear him on the, on the, on the EP. Yes. Yeah, you do. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he's, he starts and, and ends the, the EP, but, uh, yeah, cause he was in the studio with me a couple of days. Uh, so anyways, I, I sporadically went into the studio into that late 2014, early 2015, um, and then I kind of put on the back burner. So yeah, I can't, I can't really tell you how many days I spent in the studio because this was more of an ongoing project. And like I said, I yeah. put on the back burner after 2015. Um, and then it's one of the reasons I had my second son very happily. So I went to dedicate time to that. And I came back to it in late 2016. Um, one of the reasons is um, I was kind of in a weird place at that time. My mother was going through chemotherapy and uh, you know, I was just having like... Um, I was, I was feeling weird. Basically, long story short, the reimagining kind of saved me musically. It reminded me of what I really love about music. And I think that was important for me to do that all myself. But I really just kind of locked myself away um, autumn 2016 and finished it. You know, it, I think I needed that space to come to that. But, you know, once mm -hmm. I was, I just felt so happy about music again. And I'm so excited about um, not only sharing this with everyone, but you know, finishing up my new album and getting that out this year. Uh, just, I'm, I haven't been this excited about music in a long time. And I credit a lot of that to going back to my roots with ECP and just focusing on the songs being all heart. You know what I mean? If there's something you want to do, just do it, figure it out, do the research. You know, I mean, I did a documentary about the making of my full length album. I'd never done a film before. Now I consider myself a filmmaker. Cause like, you know, that's, it's just, you never know what the future holds unless you dive into it and just have the confidence, not cockiness, have the confidence that you can do that, but also know when to delegate as well. I think a big part of that is, um, <clears throat> you know, trying something and failing and learning from that, whether it's mm. you learn how to do it right. Yeah. Or you learn that, uh, you need to bring someone in to help you with it. Yeah. Um, so kind of jumping over to the um, <clears throat> like the vocal side of things, mm. how do you keep your, your voice healthy when you're, you know, maybe in sort of longer periods of recording? Like if you're recording for mm -hmm. a couple of days in a row or maybe a week, you know? Even just a vocal session, I mean, you're not going to go and just sing for like 10 minutes. You're going to sing probably mm -hmm. for a few hours at a time. So hydration is the number one thing. Hydration, warm up, and... Um, and take breaks for sure. I, I, I'm, I need to listen to my own advice sometimes. The hydration part is fine. Um, and I definitely take breaks and everything, but the thing I don't listen to myself in, if, if something's just not clicking at that moment, oftentimes I want to redo it like 20 times until I get it right. But really, as my vocal coach would say, sometimes you just need to chill for a minute and it'll come. And then when you come back to it, maybe in a few minutes, you'll nail it in the first take. You know what I mean? You just... Yeah. You know, if anyone's watched my, my, my album documentary, Walking Proof, you'll know that I, I like to keep going and keep going. And sometimes they'll just be like, it's great the way it is. Just stop. You're going to burn yourself out. With that said, do you think that artists should work with a vocal coach during recording? I think they should do it in general. I think anyone who considers yeah. themselves a, a singer and wants to keep doing that um, in life, I think they need to find someone that they click with, a vocal coach. Um, and some people get offended by that. And it's like, no, you can be a great singer, but you've got to learn proper techniques so you can keep doing this for years. Yeah. And so you can, um, like, just a short story for me, like the reason I started vocal lessons years ago, which they're not really vocal lessons, my vocal coach would say it's just tune-ups. You know what I mean? We're just going in, I've been doing this for so long. Um, and I've actually taught vocal uh, lessons in the past. But 
I originally went because sometimes I'd be great as a teenager. And then sometimes mm-hmm. I'd be awful. I just didn't know how to get there. And it was just something was happening at some performances I'd have or recording that something would click and everything. It was like, yeah, it was a great show. And the next one would be like polar opposite. So you know, it was kind of like, well, how can I be consistent and know actually what how to get myself to that place all the time? So I found a vocal coach, been with her ever since. It's been many, many years. And her name is Jen. And she's wonderful. And you can get to know her by watching my documentary, Walk in Proof. Uh, this is a little plug for it, but really it's not a plug because yeah. you can download it for free from my website, Um And speaking of vocal coaches, mm-hmm. uh, we recently interviewed Melissa Cross, who had so much awesome advice oh, to yeah. share. Uh, she was great. Well, she gave us so much material like because she there was did, so much. Yeah. I think we talked to her for about an hour and we had to cut it down to half hour just because you know, we don't want the show to be so long, but you know, um, within the interview itself, what we actually shared with people, she did speak a lot about other singers because she's most famous for the Zen of Screaming, which is her yep. working with, you know, rock and metal singers and teaching them to scream healthily and properly without, you know, at least minimizing damage. She would say no damage. I would say minimizing damage. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but we did want to ask her a little bit about her own singing technique because she's actually a classically trained opera singer, which is a little known fact about her and actress. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so we wanted to ask her a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, here she is sharing some background about her own singing technique that didn't quite make it into the interview, but we thought you you need to see. Would you say you're obviously, you've been doing this for, for a long time. Are you at a place now where there's not even a thought in your mind when you sing? Never. No? I'm a human being and I'm also like totally ADD. <laughs> <laughs> so what goes on, I, I just want to ask, like, what goes on when you're singing? It's a very good question. I allow everything. Like, it's all of a sudden, I was like, okay, red. Okay, so I take the vowel and I smear a vowel across the venue so it bounces off the wall. So say the word, the lyric is, hey, and the operative vowel is A. I go, eh, and the A goes, bounces off the wall, bounces over there, and then then I say, oh, did I do my laundry? Oh, shit, I forgot. Oh, that guy's cute. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, I wonder if that, you know, like it goes a million miles a minute. There's like, I allow all that gibberish right but if I you don't stop al- it you're just adding more thoughts right exactly yeah. exactly just let it flow let it flow but i always like am um, in the so the music has a language that is not verbal it's all feelings right and so i allow myself to uh, allow those feelings to um channel through my voice because that's what makes a voice good is is a voice that's connected to feelings Otherwise, it's hollow. It actually sounds different. I, I can show you, you know. Yeah, it please, sounds please, let's do it. Oh, shit, I knew you were yeah. going to say that. <laughs> oh, you can't have oh a list across in the show and you don't give us some examples. Oh, Come my on. God. Okay, so, uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to do something silly. I'm going to say, um, okay, so I'm going to do it with, with I'm going to listen to my voice. I'm going to try and sound like somebody else, okay? It's 9 a.m. Got to get up and go again. Another dollar. Right? Okay. That's it. Sure. That's the one where I'm like, I'm like not connected. Right? I'm not really in it. I'm just like, like listening to myself try to sound like I think it should sound. And that wasn't that good. But you know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't connected to any feelings there. Mm. I was just, okay. So I go, it's 9 a.m. I got to get up and go again. Another dollar, another day. See, I was in it. Completely different. That's a different sound because my feelings. You're you're talking to us. It sounds like you're communicating something. Exactly. And that's what non-classical music is supposed to do. That's how you get people to connect emotionally. Exactly. Right. And also there was something different going in my eyes. See, because the other time I was like, there's nothing there. Because I'm so into myself You're trying to be somebody else mm-hmm. or be what I'm supposed to be or what you think I I think you should think I should be, you know, that whole thing, mm-hmm. right? That narcissism. Mm-hmm. Or you you just like go there and that takes a lot of courage because you know, and that's that's what's really great about Janice. I got taught. I mean, Janice had nothing to lose. She wore everything out here. Everyone laughed at her. Everyone, you know, she 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 had a dark. She was dark, but she had a lot of pain. So I, it's no coincidence that a lot of the singers that I teach that have had a really tough life are incredible singers because they just don't cover up anymore. They don't care. 
they're perfect pieces of toast. You know, they've been toasted. They've seen the demon. They've seen it all. It's like, okay, gonna bring it on. Oh, Melissa's great. Oh, yeah. I love, love Melissa. Same. We love you. We do love you, Melissa. Marcio, back to you. Oh, wow. And, I feel so special. I know. We're shining the spotlight on you today. I know. Wow. Um, so I want to say that yeah. I, uh, I've heard the reimagining. I heard mm-hmm. it before. Um, before most. For I would everyone say, else, because you're just so special. Uh, well, I'd say <laughs> myself and your wife. Chelsea yes. are probably the two that, that heard it first other than you. Sure. Um, and I really like how you've taken the existing songs and you kind of show them in a different light, mm-hmm. which makes it more than just an acoustic EP, which we kind of touched on like earlier. Yeah. Um, tell us a bit more about, about that. I wanted to bring the songs back to how I wrote them because, you know, even though sometimes when I'm writing a song and I'm nine times out of 10, you, on my acoustic guitar, I'm still imagining like what else, like right now, this is when the drums are going to come in. Like, right, yeah. oh, this is going to get bigger here. Maybe a string arrangement here. So I'm hearing all that when I'm writing the songs, right? But I did want to bring everything back to just, you know, what it sounds like to be in the room with me making, mm-hmm. writing my songs or, you know, the many uh, solo acoustic shows I perform live. Because I, I think um, it probably showcases the the songwriting more. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, I, I think because there's, because it is more chilled and there's not as much happening, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in terms of there's not as big, in, you know, in so much instrumentation and stuff going on. Um, it almost makes you listen to the lyrics a bit more intently in, dif- in a different way. Was that one of the intentions when you decided to reimagine the songs? Yeah, actually, it, it, kind of like, I, I, I feel like this is more lasting and less, you know, again, this is not taken from my albums. I'm very proud and, and, and happy with what I do in my albums. But, you know, they're a bit more, um, I guess, a little bit more modern. You know what I mean? Whereas I feel like something like this, you can listen to it in 20, 30 years. And I feel like it's very much just a guy with his acoustic guitar, just like you can listen to stuff from like 50 years ago. You know, style, you still, the different styles still creep in, obviously, but it's a little mm-hmm. bit more raw. And also, like on my albums, I, I people have noticed this, but there's quite a juxta, juxta I can't speak, juxtaposition <laughs> on my albums with uh, many of my songs featuring like dark lyrical content, because I don't write happy lyrics. I never have. There's no point in me writing if I'm happy. I write only when I need to. Um, but, d- you know, dark lyrical content usually against a more upbeat musical landscape. You know, not not always, but for the most part. Um, you know, and although I'm kind of moving away from that a little bit on the new album that I'm working on, but, uh, I feel like the lyrics ma- or the music matches the lyrics a bit more in these versions of the songs. And there's some improv on, on the EP too. Right? Yeah. Um, the best example of it would actually be during, um, the interlude of holding on. Um, I was recording it and I just started singing this brand new part over, uh, what usually is the instrumental break in the song. Um, and what you hear is the first only take. Um, it was made up on the spot. One take um, wonder. That's it. That's it. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to keep it in there. Like, I'm always singing, like, my, my wife and kids, it's no strain. It's not a, it's no, um, it, they're just so used to hearing me sing and improvising every every moment of the day, pretty much. This just happened to get captured in the right time, the right moment, and it worked. And uh, since the EP is, you know, about kind of reimagining the songs, um, you know, I decided to keep it in. While we're on the topic of improv, one of our past guests does this better than most. Yes. Jason Page is such a dude, and he was such an incredibly unique and fun guest um, for us to interview, um, but he does like to go off of it. We, we really had totally. to reel him in, and we yeah, didn't even so, do that entirely. No, we no. We edited so, a lot. <laughs> before we even started the interview, I, I was, yeah. I was uh, chatting with him while we were setting things up, and sure. uh, as soon as the camera opened, he was there with his keyboard and he had his mic set up. And I was like, oh, he's obviously playing a gig later or something. And he's just doing the interview there. But he was starting making up songs from the moment I got on there. And I was trying to explain to him a few things. And and then when Marcio got got on, again, before we even started the interview, I know you typed in the notes, reel him in. (laughs) (laughs) And I I was like, I don't know if we can. We We might just have to let this run its course and then we'll, you know edit it once he um, starts the song you can't stop him oh no no you, you can't. can't and you don't want to either because no, you kind of want to hear what happens <laughs> where it goes exactly and this is um, i think a, a great example yeah. of just uh, one of those moments that uh w- we just uh cut from the interview for for time and also the fourth thing is that i'm 
I'm controlling oh, a lot of my thing. No, I'm joking. Right, I'm joking. Right. I'm joking. I'm joking. Go ahead. <laughs> that all my conversations are controlled by this uh, this looper thing going on right here, which has a lot of effects, <laughs> delay, <laughs> and is ready at any time to turn what I say into music. Why do I feel like if I went out to dinner with you, you'd you'd have that with you? <laughs> like we, I have to wear headphones. Turn what I say into music. To turn what I say into music. To turn, to turn what I say into music. To turn what I say into music. To turn what I say into music. Music. To turn what I say into music. All right, all right. Back it up. Back it up. <laughs> back to you guys. <laughs> cool. Well, actually, it's 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 more about you. Um, it's all about you. It's all about it's it's all about you, and it's no, no, no. But I'm all about you. Oh, so whoa, that, that kind of does it kind of meta back whoa. and forth the mirror the mirror thing <laughs> mind yeah. blown what a dude <laughs> what a dude he's a whirlwind of energy a pokeball of fire or something i don't know but uh we loved him and uh yeah i i'm looking forward to hear more crazy looping magic from him Absolutely, sure. absolutely. Hey everyone, so this episode was brought to you by Chris Keaton, Joe Centenary, Buck Naked Soap Company, 30 Roses, and Social Surge. That's beginning to become a mouthful, by the way, Ross. That is a lot of support for us. Wow, phrasing, Archer reference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, it's actually very humbling for us and we really appreciate the support we've been getting. Um, we, we've noticed, and other people have noticed, which is really cool when we get people telling us, you know, and congratulating us on the show growing, but really that's nothing to do with us. It's all to do with everyone tuning in and sharing it and i want to jump in and just say yeah. thank everyone who has sent me screenshots of the michael bolton valentine's <laughs> yeah, uh, <me> <laughs> episode i've had more of those than i ever expected that i would have uh so Come that's on show, just a michael. nice little reminder that people are actually listening and, yeah. and paying attention to us so um, is, is that yeah. a smart choice that our branding of bridge atlantic is the most closely related to michael bolton is that good or bad or? um i think it's pray awesome okay i don't know if it's a good or a bad thing but i i i mean we've got to be known for something and if we're Absolutely. there's worse things we could be known for than i mean talking about michael bolton that's true know? that's true um but you know anyways like i was saying I, we really truly appreciate the support and if you want to you know join the team of people supporting us you head over on to patreon.com slash bridge mm-hmm. the atlantic uh you can pledge for as little as a dollar per episode and uh you get you know, you get the episodes first mm-hmm. before anyone else does. Uh, you can ask our guests questions. Yes. Uh, depending on how much you you uh, contribute, you may get a free T-shirt as well. Yeah, you get mentioned uh, on the, the show. All the details are over there. Yeah, yeah. There's so there's there's lots of stuff going on. Um, head over there. All the details are there. Um, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and iTunes as well, so you don't miss any episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, and please do leave us a comment and let us know what you think of the show. Yeah, we want to talk with everybody that supports us. We don't want you to just be like invisible. Like we are real humans. We actually are. And we do this because people are supporting us and we love doing this and we love uh, sharing knowledge, sometimes knowledge, <laughs> tips. We love this- whatever we're sharing. We like sharing. We love sharing. Team. That's it. Um, so. And, you know, you can find us on all the socials, Twitter, Facebook, iTunes, and YouTube, like uh, Ross already mentioned. Um, but don't forget to visit our website, which Ross created, of course, awesomely. And uh, just pick up one of our shirts while you're there. Why not? Yeah. You can be okay. as cool as this. <laughs> well, I, whether that's an incentive or not is, I don't okay, know. You can be cooler than this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably better. Yeah, yeah. Um, so as for me, I'm working on websites for various artists at the moment. I actually recently launched a new website for uh, our good friend Christine at 30 Roses. Ah, um, yes. You can check out more of my work and my blog at electrickiwi.co.uk. You'll find me on Twitter and Instagram as Electric Kiwi and Facebook Electric Kiwi Design. Yes, and considering this was pretty much an interview for me to Hey, I'm sure you already know that I've got a new acoustic EP, The Reimagining Volume 1, coming out this Friday, March 31st, 2017, like I need to say that. And I'd really, truly appreciate your support uh, by downloading it on my website or um, wherever else you like to download stuff. But um, definitely my website, uh, which Ross designed beautifully, of course, uh, would be the best place. And that is marcionovelli.com. I'm also working on my upcoming new solo album, Full Length Solo Album. And you can find more, uh, find out more about that on my website as well. So make sure to follow me personally on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify, I guess, which are all my name, Marcio 
No Valley. And that seems like a good place for us to wrap up our first episode of B-Sides. Uh, please do let us know what you think. Yes, and we'll be back next week with a brand new interview, so make sure to tune in. And uh, I guess we're going to leave you right now with uh, one of the songs off my new EP, The Reimagining, Volume 1. Hope you enjoy. Doctor, please, I really need your help I fear I'm falling and don't trust myself I'm on my knees, begging you for the answers Paralyzed by anxieties And I've tried bearing tragedy But it's digging away if I write it in a song Will you take it and bring it and right all the wrong If I hide it in a song Will you find it, unwind it so I can move on I cannot sleep My brain will not allow it over Come by the urgency So doctor, please Cauterize all the cancer's instrumental lobotomy And I've tried Burying tragedy But it's clawing away at me If I write it in a song In this song